For 12.30, the coefficients of friction between blocks A and C and the horizontal surface are mu s for static 0.24 and mu k for kinetic 0.2. Knowing that the mass of A, B, and C are given determine the tension of the cord and the acceleration of each block. So this is the setup that we have here. They gave the mass. Let's go ahead and put the masses down here. So this is 5 kilograms, this is 10 kilograms, and this is also 10 kilograms. Okay, <clears throat> there are two things we need to be aware of these problems. The first one is we need to determine whether the thing is going to move or not, or the system is going to move or not, right? And this, an example like this, perhaps B is going to move downwards, and if B move downwards, it's going to pull A to the left, uh, to the right, sorry, and C to the left, right? But perhaps C is too heavy and it's only going to pull A down. That's also a possibility, right? So we need to be aware of what's going on. And if we do everything right when we're setting up the math, then the math is going to tell us if our conclusion was right or not. Okay, so we'll be able to figure out whether we made any um, incorrect assumptions with the result of the math. The second thing here is, and this is very particular to this problem, is that A and C, right, they are both trying to oppose the weight force, right? Because the weight force here down of B, it's uh, obviously going trying to move B downwards. And then we have the friction on C over here to the right and A here to the left, and they're both opposing that weight of B, right? Because of that, and only because of that, in a system like this, it's interesting for us to create um, two distinct positive directions, let's put it that way, um, in terms of which direction the thing would move, right? So if you notice, if I were to say everything going rightwards is positive, everything going downwards is positive, for instance, then the friction on C would be positive and the friction on A would be negative. But that would be um, conceptually incorrect, right? Because you can see that both the friction on A and C, they're both opposing the same force, which is the force of the weight of B. So on a system like this, and this is the only thing that makes this harder than any of the other pulley problems that we solved, and I'll put the links up here for you guys to, to have a look on those, is that we need to be aware of that. Okay, so for a system like this, the first first thing I'm going to do is I'll create my vectors, my position vectors. All right, and I'll create position vectors. The first one is quite, quite obvious. I'm going to choose the line here of the pulley, and I'm going to go down all the way to this other pulley here. Oh, that was a straight line. That's pretty good. And that's going to be my YB, right? YB is a vector that leads from this reference baseline that I just created, and it chose this arbitrarily. And it goes all the way to the um, middle of that pulley B. So if B goes down, the block B goes down, then my YB increases. If my B goes up, then my YB decreases, right? Then for um, A and C, I'm going to go ahead and take the middle here, okay? Right, the middle right where, where uh, the YB is, and I'll create a vector um, Y, no Y, sorry, X, XC. And that likewise, like uh, YB, that's leading from my reference there all the way to C. So if C is going leftwards, my XC will decrease. And also I'll create a vector XA which just like XC, leaves from a reference and then goes to block A, okay? So if you do this, if you get to this point and you realize that A and C will be like, um, quote unquote, helping each other, then this problem becomes simple, okay? Because the hardest thing, in my opinion, is precisely to know that although these guys are pointing in different directions, right, when we actually account for the forces that are um, acting on them, they are both acting, um, helping each other, okay? And that's Honestly, the hardest thing on this problem. From now on, we're just going to do things like we did before. We're going to see if it's if it moves or not, and so on and so forth. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead and do um, let's go ahead and do our constant equation. And we know the constant equation relates to the length of this rope here. We're assuming that this rope does not stretch and that this rope has um, no mass or the mass is negligible, right? So that the tension is the same on all the the rope. The other thing is that the length of this rope, this uh, thing that I just highlighted as blue, is going to be a constant length, right? And then we can say that if I sum up xA plus xB plus 2 times yB, that has to be a constant, okay? And just because I can see some questions showing up, this extra bit here, you see that there's a little... This little red bit, it's like an extra piece of uh, length that is accounted for on xA and xC, but it's not part of the rope, okay? And we could very well include that, let's just put here as a extra in this equation, like that, and the equation would still hold true, right? That little extra bit plus xA plus xB plus 2 times yB is equal to a constant. And then when I derive, I don't need to keep that in, but I, I can if I want to, if I derive all this in respect to time, the extra bit is a constant, it's not going anywhere, it's not going to change ever, so that's going to go to zero, but my xA and xB, they will become my velocity of A, velocity of B, my, oh, sorry, this is not B, this is C, 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 and 2 times the velocity of b, they all have to be 0 because the derivative of a constant is 0. And then I do that one more time and I get that the acceleration of a plus the acceleration of b plus 2 times the acceleration of c has to be 0. And that will be our first equation, right? So that's be our equation 1. Cool. All right. 
what will I do next? Let's do go ahead and do some free body diagrams on these guys. So let's isolate these blocks. Let's look at them as if they were um, individual units. Okay, so free body diagram, which is just another way of saying that we are doing a control volume around the block. Okay, so first of block A, what do we have in block A? We, it's all staying on the surface, so we know it will have a certain weight. And because it's not going anywhere, and because of Newton's third law, we know that it will have a reaction force, which is going to be the normal force. We also know there's a tension from the cord T, and that the friction for A is trying to pull it backwards like that. Okay, so if we sum up all the forces, if we sum up all the forces on Y, we are going to have, um, and let's go ahead and do downwards, it's positive, and in this case here for A, okay, and that's what I was talking to you guys before, remember that XA is going in this direction here. So let's go ahead and call for positive on the left direction. Uh, so if that's positive, it means that my friction minus my T, and those guys will be, that's Y, sorry. So my weight minus my normal, and we know it's not going up or down, it's not gonna move up or down because that surface has to be zero, so therefore weight of A has to be equal to the normal. Um, on the x direction, the sum of forces on the x direction, then we have the friction on A minus the tension, and that has to be equal to mass of A times acceleration of A, Newton's second law. Cool, let's move on to the next one. Um, let's go and do black, I guess. So the next one will be B. And for B, we have the weight of B, pulling it downwards, and then we have two ropes, we have two tensions there, and there are no forces on the x direction. So, the sum of forces on the y direction here, remembering that our yb is going downwards, so I'm going to say that downwards is positive, will be weight of b minus 2t will be equal to the mass of b times the acceleration of b, according to Newton's second law. And last but not least, we have block c. In block c, if you guys recall, we have xc going to the right direction, so I'm going to go ahead and say this is positive, and it'll be consistent with the bottom as positive for the way to be. And then, so what we have here is we have the tension pointing to the left, we have the friction on C point opposing the tension, we have the weight of C as well, and we have normal force reacting to the weight of C from the surface. So the sum of forces on the y direction will be weight of C minus the normal C, and that has to be equal to zero because it's not going anywhere. So the weight of C equals the normal force. And we also know on the x direction, we'll have, what's the positive one? No, so we have the friction of C minus the tension, which equals the mass of C times acceleration of C. All right, so at this point in time, if we wanted to solve, we, we almost could, right? There's one, only one detail missing because know what we have as a known. We have uh, AC as a known, tension as a known, AB as a known, tension is a known, AA is a known, tension is a known. So we have four unknowns, but we have four equations, right? That's the first equation, and then the other ones that are highlighted on the other one. So equation two, three, and four. There's only one detail missing for us to be able to solve, and that is the idea around the normal, right? Because we know the friction has to do with normal force. So to be able to find this and not have this as a known, we need to be able to solve for the normal force. But to do that, we need to use the uh, coefficient of friction. And the coefficient of friction is related to whether the thing is moving or not, so we need to figure out whether the thing's gonna move or not. So let's do that. Uh, what are the forces that are trying, trying to move the system? Remember here? So we have the weight of B trying to move the system, and we have the frictions, both frictions trying to stop it, right? And the, the tensions are just a reaction to those. So trying to move, we have the weight of B. And trying to stop the movement, not stop, but to detain, I guess, the movement, uh, to keep, it's probably the best term, we have friction on C and the friction on A. So pretty much the idea is if the weight of B is greater than the forces of friction, then this thing will move. If not, it will not move. So let's figure out what this is. This guy here is mass of B times gravity, and these guys here, we can rewrite them as normal on C times the coefficient, and normal on A times the coefficient. So I'm using the static one, and let's just recap that quickly. Know that the, where is it? The, the, the static one is greater, right? So we're gonna have the greatest friction if the thing's still. So if we check, for this condition, and we see that weight uh, of B is enough to suppress both the frictions on the the still state, on the steady state and the static state, then 
we're going to move on to the kinetic, right? And then we go on and move on to this guy here, All right? That's the idea. If we use the kinetic straight off, then we'll never know if this guy's going to move or not because we know that once things start moving, then the friction is smaller. Okay, um, we know that this, these guys are equal to the weight, so we can rewrite this as the weight of C times the coefficient static plus the weight of A, the coefficient static. Okay, so in other words, simply put, this is equal to the coefficient times the weight of A plus weight of C. And we actually can simplify one more time this, which is because that we know that's related to gravity, so the coefficient static times gravity times the mass of A plus the mass of C. So now we compare the two. The mass of A, mass of C, and the coefficient and the gravity. So on this end here we have the mass which is 10, so it's 10 times gravity, so it's going to give us 98.1 newtons. And over here we have the point 24 times, what is this, 10 and 5, so 15, times gravity, 0.35. So 35.3 newtons over here, and over here we're going to have about 98.1 newtons. Okay, so that's the idea. We have 98 trying to make this thing move and 35 trying to keep it still. So therefore, let's put it like this, because um, weight of B is greater than the sum of friction A and friction C, the system will move. Okay, and I'm assuming both A and C will move. And I'll do another problem later in which we'll see one of them is not going to move so that you see what happens, okay? So I'm, for now I'm assuming both will move, and then we're doing math, and you're going to see that that checks out. Uh, all right, so now that we know it's going to move, what we need to remember, and this is kind of crucial, I'm just going to put a little I'll highlight this. Therefore, we need to use this coefficient, right? So where is my problem? So we forget about that and focus on this one here. All right, that's crucial. Not because it's hard or anything, just because it's so easy to forget, and so many students forget this at this point, and that obviously is going to lead you to the incorrect answer. Okay, so kinetic coefficient from now on. So now we have three equations for unknowns. We can solve this. It's going to be straightforward. Uh, it's mainly algebra, so I can probably speed this up on the editing for you guys. So let's solve it. Four equations for unknowns. Okay, so at this point here, all I did is I subbed in where we had, um, so I just subbed in the, the, the four equations, but the other two things that I did is where I had FA, I subbed that for the mass of A times gravity, which is weight of A, times the 0.2 coefficient, that's where this 0.2 comes from, and likewise the same thing for C, right, so it's going to be the mass of C times gravity times the 0.2 coefficient, all right. We have everything here. We have gravity. We have uh, the masses of all the women. This is 10. No, this, is, uh, this is 5. This is 10. This is 10. And 7 is a constant. So we have everything we need here. So we can solve this, and it gives, gives us 33.63 33 newtons. Okay, so that is the tension of the coordinate, one of the answers we're looking for. And then obviously, to find the other ones, then we just need to use the equations that we set up before to be able to sub in that and find the acceleration of each of the locks. So we can go ahead and do perhaps uh, acceleration of B will just be the weight of B minus 2 divided by the mass of B. So this will be just be gravity times mass of B minus 2 divided by the mass of B times the 33.63 we just found. So we have everything we need here. This renders 3.83 meters per second squared. Note that this is positive, so it's indeed the direction that we said it would be downwards. And B is probably the easiest one to see that because there's not really any other option. Uh, so this is one of the answers we're looking for. What else? A will be the friction of A minus friction of A minus the tension divided by the mass of A. So that's just mass of A gravity coefficient and minus 33.63. 
Once again, we have everything we need. We got to go to mass of A. So we have all these values here, and this is just minus. And remember that we said that positive direction for A, where is it? Where's my free body that went? Here it is. The positive direction for A was leftwards. So we found this to be negative, so that means that A is going rightwards, which is perfectly fine with the situation that we expected, right? So this is going rightwards. Cool. That is the answer. And finally, we have um, C, which is we can use the other one minus 2AB minus AA. A which gives us minus 1.42 meters per second squared. Okay, and remember that C is heavier than, C is the heaviest of them all, right? So we would expect it to be, well, it's the same weight as B, right? So A is the lightest one. And so it makes sense that it's traveling slower than A. And it's negative, and remember that the, once again, where's our free body there? There you go. Rightwards was positive for our C, so it's going to go negative, so it's going to go leftwards, which is completely, consistent with what we would expect. Cool, and that's it. That does it for this problem. Okay, another option, all right, another way to solve it, if you wish, and I encourage you to do this if you want to. Things will play out the same way, okay, but you can do this as well. Is, uh, I flipped them right, this is B here, and this is C here. You can do, um, we're gonna have the same setup, so we're gonna have to, Two ropes here, one rope here, all that like that. Cool. Um, so what you can do is instead of creating the vectors like I did, what you can do is you can invert the vectors. So you can say x c goes from c to the reference point. And x a goes like that. And we can probably keep y b like we had before. And if you do that, well, the the set of the equations will be the same. Everything's going to be the same. But because we're assuming the right direction for c and is the the one that we expected from the start, we're going to get positives for both A and C. You would end up with, um, I ended up with, I created a little matrix to solve this, I ended up with a matrix like so. 1, 1, 2, 10, minus 5, 0, 10, 0, minus 20, and 2, gravity, gravity, 10, gravity. You can solve like this as well. This would be your constant. Then this first value here would be my AB. The second column here would be for my a, a, and this here will be for my attention. Then you solve that, and then obviously find your AC afterwards. So that's another option for you guys to have a go and just practice on this problem. Let me know if you have any questions.